Mesdames et Messieurs, thank you, Phil. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for that warm welcome. It's so wonderful to join you this morning. I'd like to thank Martin Rust, uh, the president, uh, and the other organizers for inviting me to speak to you today. You know, it's funny, I feel a little lighter this morning. I don't know why. <laughs> Um, this is likely one of my last public addresses as leader of the opposition, before I start my post-partisan life, as they like to call it, and leader of the Conservative Party. I can tell you it's been an amazing experience, um, especially living at Stornoway. It's really been quite surreal. Um, my brothers, they're quite jokesters, and when we first moved in at first Christmas, they gave JP, my spouse, a t-shirt, and it said, Stornoway's pool boy. But the funny thing is, there is no pool <laughs> at Stornoway. But we have really loved it, JP's loved it too. And I can tell you, it's for him, you know, he said to me, I can't imagine being a championship bull rider, you know, having to throw tea parties at Stornoway. But he did it, he did it. And he did it with, um, you know, with his usual down-to-earth charm, his love of life, and he had a lot of fun. But I have to tell you, it wasn't just tea parties. He handed out candy at uh, the door for Halloween, but he kind of cheated because he dressed up as a cowboy. <laughs> but we had beer pong tournaments for the inter interns at Stornoway. I had to learn how to play beer pong. Karaoke for the press gallery parties. Um, we've had a lot of fun. In fact, I'm pretty sure that um, after I step down, there's going to be a draft JP movement. Now, I've been asked to discuss uh, the state of the conservative movement in Canada this morning and how our party can prepare for the next election in 2019. Now, as generally uh, is the case, I think the best thing we should do is start at the beginning. Now, I think back to the nearly six million Canadians that cast ballots for our party in 2015, which wasn't far off the number of votes we got in 2011, which won us a majority. And it's more votes than we got in either 2008 or 2006. But ultimately, it wasn't enough. Now, when you're faced with defeat, ladies and gentlemen, you can react in one of two ways. You can retreat from the field, dejected and despondent, falling into a counterproductive cycle of recriminations and excuses. And I can tell you, when I first became a leader, I phoned Mr. Harper, Mr. Mulroney, Ms. Campbell, and others, and asked for advice. And one of the things they said to me was, don't do, after 10 years in power and now in opposition, don't do what the liberals did when that happened to them. They didn't accept that they had been defeated. It took three elections and several leadership races to get organized and energized. So you have another choice. You can emerge more determined than ever to succeed. Now, initially, I wasn't sure what to expect. Of course, losing hurt and there's no doubt about it. But I try to approach it in the way that I do most things. No blaming, no grudges, learn from it, focus on the positive and get busy, get working. And I can tell you that whatever doubts that I had about our attitude or our mindset vanished at our first caucus meeting. Je n'avais jamais vu notre équipe conservatrice plus unie, plus énergique et plus déterminée. I had never seen our Conservative team more united, more energized, and more determined. Canadians had given us a job to do to serve as Her Majesty's loyal opposition, and we were ready to get to work. Canadians asked us to change our tone, and we listened, and we changed our tone. We emerged quickly, we hit the ground running, determined to be the voice of the taxpayer, and we succeeded. We are the voice of everyday working people and their families. And Canadians wanted to see a conservative team that was principled, firm, focused on doing the hard work. And we've done that. We've presented a fresh face to Canadians who now see a smart conservative team that is a very real alternative to a liberal government that is increasingly out of touch and entitled. We knew that the Liberals' newfound commitment to the middle class was just smoke and mirrors, and it didn't take long for that mask to slip. After promising Canadians that they had changed, it turned out they were the same old Liberals. Now, in less than two years, we've seen ministers who held a private pay-to-play fundraisers, who used public money 
to appear on a late night comedy show in LA who embellished his role in one of the largest anti-terror military operations in modern history. These weren't simple missteps or misunderstandings. They were manifestations of how the liberals approached governing, entitled and out of touch. And it's a mindset that runs all the way from the party's backbench to the PMO. And that's now why we have a prime minister who sees nothing wrong with rubbing elbows with people at cash for access fundraising events. And a prime minister who has no issues spending nearly $30,000 of taxpayer money on a Broadway performance. You would be hard pressed to think of a prime minister that's further removed from the experience of everyday Canadians. Now let me tell you, in 1967, a very different kind of leader took to the stage at a conservative convention in Toronto to reflect on his time in office. He was a teacher's son who worked tirelessly for everything he ever achieved. That was John Diefenbaker. And he told party members this, I was criticized for being too much concerned with the average Canadian, but I can't help that because I'm one of them. Now just as Deef did all those years ago, our party is standing up for the interests of ordinary Canadians. And they don't ask for much. They want a good paying job that allows them to provide for their family. And while they're happy to pay their fair share in taxes, they also expect to be left with enough of their paycheck to save for their future. They want to raise their families in safe communities where they don't have to worry when their kids go out to play. But whether it's borrowing and spending billions of dollars effectively mortgaging the future of Canada's young people through higher taxes and more debt, or eliminating the universal child care benefit, while at the same time raising taxes on everything from kids' sports, textbooks, tuition, public transit passes, arts classes, or returning to the days of a justice system that favors the rights of criminals over those of the victims. This Liberal government is failing to deliver on its promise to average Canadians. As Her Majesty's loyal opposition, our Conservative Party has been looking out for everyday working people as a voice for the taxpayer in Ottawa. And today, we're getting things done. Nous avons sonné l'alarme sur les hausses de taxes et d'impôts des libéraux pour les familles, les années, les étudiants et les entreprises. Nous avons mis en lumière la nouvelle dette libérale de plusieurs dizaines de milliards de dollars. En tant que chef intérimaire, Je suis très fier de ce que notre équipe conservatrice a accompli. We have done our job. We've raised the alarm on liberals' tax hikes, on families, on seniors, on students, on businesses. We've shone a light on the billions and billions of dollars in new liberal debt. We forced the liberals to back down on motion six, a draconian set of rules that would have stripped the opposition in perpetuity of its ability to hold the government to account and we stood up for the right of regular Canadians to have a say in how their democracy works via a referendum. And we forced the government to accelerate Yazidi refugee resettlement in Canada. These are just a couple of things that we've done over the last 18 months. So as interim leader, I'm so proud of what our conservative team has accomplished. I think we're demonstrating to Canadians that there is another way, that there is another party, that wants to put their interests before their own. But make no mistake, we have got much more work to do. We need to continue reaching out to Canadians of all backgrounds to make our case for change. And I think one way that we can do this more effectively is by having more women on our team. And I believe that strongly. It's my, it's my intention to help lead a charge at the local level to encourage more women to run for the Conservative Party. As a movement and as a party, we have worked hard since our founding to advance the rights of women, not just in Canada, but around the world. We should never forget that we're the party of the first female cabinet minister and, of course, the first female prime minister. And under Mr. Harper, Canada first recognized Malala Yousafzai for her heroism with the offer of Canadian citizenship. During my time as Minister of Status of Women, we worked to found the UN International Day of the Girl. It was a conservative government that successfully fought to ensure that First Nations women living on reserve were entitled to matrimonial property rights, and finally, after decades, treated equally to women that were not Aboriginal. 
And over the last year and a half, the conservative opposition has fought for the rights of oppressed women every step of the way, the most oppressed women in the world. Our advocacy forced the government to recognize the plight of the Yazidi people as a genocide who have suffered greatly under the boot of ISIS terrorism. Yazidi women in particular are being targeted for sexual slavery or worse, an atrocity that cannot continue. And our caucus forcefully advocated and we won and we'll see those women come to safety in Canada. Our caucus has forcefully opposed Saudi membership in the UN Commission on the Status of Women, and rightly so. And I'm proud that thanks to all of you and all parties, uh, support for the JUST Act, my private member's bill to help ensure better application of sexual assault law by our judiciary. Our caucus, <laughs> thanks JP. I want to thank JP for starting the applause on that one. <laughs> but our caucus and our party is stronger with capable, strong, talented women on our team. And I was proud to be able to get the opportunity to put those kind of women on the front bench to show this country what they're made of. People like Candace Bergen, people like Lisa Raitt, Diane Watts, Michelle Rempel, Kelly Block. They're amazing leaders. But I want to make an important point. I didn't elevate them to fill a quota, and that's important. We do it because we have women that can compete. They have what it takes to compete. In fact, all of the women in Parliament do. And I've had the privilege to elevate them, these strong women, to key roles, and they've delivered, and I never doubted it. Friend, I leave this job very optimistic about our future. With every passing day, more and more Canadians are coming to realize that this government's actions simply don't align with its words. And Canadians are noticing. In fact, the numbers speak for themselves. In the first three months of 2017, our party took in nearly twice as much in donations from a much larger donor base than the Liberals, raising in the first quarter alone more than $9 million, while the Liberals were barely able to manage one-third of that. that is not typical for an opposition party. So I'm very proud. Our accessible vote, that is the number of people who would consider voting conservative, has shot up in the last year and a half by nearly 10 points. And as opposed to the coronations we've come to expect from the Liberal Party, our competitive leadership race has generated real interest. Again, the numbers speak for themselves. We have set a new record for membership sales easily surpassing our number from 2004 when we merged two national parties and held open nominations all across the country. As of March 28th, we have just over 259,000 paid Conservative Party members in this country. It's amazing, amazing. And they keep coming in. That's an increase of more than 150,000 members from the beginning of January. And let me remind you, those are paid memberships, not free, like in the Liberal Party. I think it's fair to say these membership numbers show a healthy, strong, conservative party that's ready to challenge Justin Trudeau and the Liberals in 2019. Now, friends, before I wrap up today, I hope you'll indulge me in share with you, sharing with you some personal news. I think it's the first time in Ottawa that the media actually found out last. It's probably the worst kept secret. But in, in addition to serving as leader of the opposition, obviously I have another job as a member of parliament. And I've had such an incredible pleasure serving the people of Edmonton Spruce Grove and of course most recently the people of Sturgeon River Park Lad. It's been amazing. Anyone who's in the room that's an MP knows what a privilege it is to get to serve the people that vote for you. But as my time comes to an end, I think it's important to look forward. So I am, as you know, going to be leaving uh, my, resigning my seat as member of parliament after the House rises in the summer, um, and to seek a new chapter in my life. And I'm, JP and I are both very, very excited, but very, very grateful. Um, it's truly been one of the greatest honors of my life to serve in the House of Commons, and I can't imagine years ago thinking that this would have happened. Uh, so I thank all of my constituents, I think there might be a few here, um, for all of their support over the years. It's been such an incredible privilege and such an incredible honor. But I want to leave you with this thought. I am incredibly optimistic about our future. 
Because on May 28th, our members are going to choose the man or woman who's going to lead us the distance. The issues that the leadership candidates emphasized over the last 18 months may have varied, and some of their policy prescriptions may have differed. But they all understand that a government's role is to serve the people who pay the bills, not the well-heeled interests that talk the loudest. À tous les candidats dans cette course et en fait à tous mes collègues du caucus conservateur, permettez-moi de dire une chose à sujet de ce travail. Personne ne devient chef du parti comme par magie. Celle ou celui qui occupera ce poste va sans aucun doute passer du temps à apprendre, à écouter et à travailler fort. Je l'ai fait, Stephen Harper l'a fait, et nos prédécesseurs l'ont fait. To all candidates in this race, and indeed to all of my colleagues in the Conservative Caucus, let me just say one thing about this job. Nobody walks on water to get to the party leadership. Whichever woman or man who wins this job will undoubtedly spend time learning and listening and working. I did it, Stephen Harper did it, and so did our predecessors. And I know that you'll rise to that challenge. I also want, before to finish, uh, thank a couple of people. First off, my deputy leader, Denny LaBelle. I also want to thank my house leader, Candace Bergen. <laughs> and look, regardless of who wins, the Conservative Party is going to be in great hands. Our new leader is going to continue the work that we began after the last ele election, demonstrating that our party, and our party alone, is the voice of the Canadian taxpayer. And with the support of our hardworking caucus and our amazingly dedicated grassroots members, he or she is going to reach out to voters across this country, building trust and making the case for a conservative government. As conservatives, we're uniting around the fundamental issues that define us. Low taxes, safe communities, and a Canada that isn't afraid to stand up for its interests at home and abroad. We win when we are the party of everyday people the gas station attendants, the dry cleaners, the manager at the grocery store, and yes, even the Bay Street crowd. Because there is room in our party for everyone who wants to work hard, play by the rules, and succeed. So yes, we are looking forward to 2019, ladies and gentlemen. Our party will continue to evolve, but we will remain grounded in the principles that we've always held close. A love of Canada, the best country in the world, a commitment to community, devotion to family, respect for good government and the rule of law, and reward for risk and hard work. Now, I've been asked more and more lately, it seems, what I think we've accomplished during my time behind the wheel of this incredible, exciting movement. And my answer is this. We are strong, focused, and united. And there was no guarantee that it would be this way. And now, we have clearly shown that Justin Trudeau can be beaten in 2019. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Thank you.